As you know by now, uh, ACI divides workloads into security zones called endpoint groups. And as you already know, within an endpoint group, uh, hosts can talk, and to communicate between endpoint groups, you need to configure the equivalent of ACLs, which are called the contracts. You also know by now that uh, EPG is mapped to virtual servers with port groups. So whenever you have an EPG configured in ACI and associated with a VMM domain, that EPG shows up as a port group where you can attach the host to. What this presentation is about is how you can further, in a more granular way, enhance security within the very same endpoint group. And so that's what this is called, is a micro-segmentation or micro-EPGs. So these are all configurations that allow you to further segment workloads within a given EPG, okay? Before we go into the micro-segmentation details, let's refresh our memory about the normal classification. So the normal way to associate workloads with endpoint groups. So the two main ways to do so are static binding, where you say, we configure ACI to associate a specific leaf with a given port and a given VLAN to a given security zone. So that's a normal way to do it. Or with dynamic binding via VMM domain integration. So basically ACI talks to the virtual machine manager, programs port groups there, and then the server admin associates Venix to port groups and this allows the virtual machine then to be forwarded by the leaf and to be segmented according to the configuration. So this is called dynamic binding. The dynamic part of it is the fact that you don't configure manually VLANs. These are all handled by ACI. So all ACI maintains the mapping between VLANs and the leaf ports and VLANs. All you need to do as a network admin is associate the VMM domain to the EPG and basically that configuration ends there. So that's the way you normally classify workloads outside of the micro-segmentation uh, set of features. As part of the micro-segmentation set of features, we consider primarily three features. One is intra-EPG isolation, which answers to the requirement for isolating hosts within the same EPG. So this is very similar to using prior VLANs uh, in a classic network. Uh, basically, the requirement here is Hosts in the same EPG cannot talk, but they can talk to other hosts in other EPGs or to the internet and so on. The other feature is intra-EPG contracts. So how about being able to do filtering within the same EPG instead of just being able to do it across different EPGs? So that's uh, the feature called intra-EPG contracts, which allows to do multiple things, not just filtering, but it could also redirect traffic that is within the same EPG and send it to a firewall, for instance. And then there is the uh, very micro EPG feature, uh, which is the one that allows you to classify the workloads based on uh, more specific attributes of the uh, servers themselves. So like the MAC address, the IP address, the VNIC name, the VM name, the operating system running on the uh, VM. So this is just a list of ex examples. There's more attributes, which you see in a few slides. Now, which kind of micro-segmentation you can use and which type of feature you can leverage depends, of course, on the ACI release. So this table gives you which release, which feature was introduced, but it also depends on the domain type. So you need to remember if you're using a physical domain, you can use the IP-based EPGs or Mac-based EPGs, but in a physical domain, the VM attributes don't make sense. They don't exist, so you cannot do classification based on the attributes of the VM, nor based on the guest operating system of the physical host. On the contrary, for the virtualized host, uh, specific ones running on VMware or on uh, Microsoft VMM, they can be classified more granularly based on, as we're saying, the guest operating system, the uh, VM attributes, and so on. So it, there's more options, of course, available with virtual machines. Let's talk first about the intra-EPG isolation. So the first feature we, we cover in the um, micro-segmentation set of features. As the name implies, this is about the fact that if you have two hosts within the same EPG, they cannot talk to each other. Okay, They can talk to another EPG by a contract. And ACI achieves this goal by programming prior VLANs. So you don't need to know that it is the case, but that's what's being done. The only scenario where you need to care about prior VLANs being configured is if you have an intermediate switch. And if you want to preserve the segmentation within this host, you need to make sure the intermediate switch also considers VLAN as prior VLAN. 
the programming on the um, policy cam is displayed here. What you can see here is the source and destination EPG, basically the very same EPG is, is programmed. And there is this special rule, the deny plus log rule with priority two. Okay, so it's a very high priority rule that normally you can imagine, even though you don't see in the zoning rule, normally you can think of the rule being a permit, but when you put into EPG isolation, this rule becomes a deny. Now, if you need two isolated EPGs to talk to each other, and I want to specify two isolated EPGs to talk to each other, then you need to also enable proxy ARP. Okay, so that's what uh, this is showing here. Now, if you need a regular EPG to talk to an isolated EPG, you don't, like the previous slide was showing. But if you need an isolated EPG to talk to another isolated EPG, then you need to enable proxy ARP. Now, let's talk about intra-EPG contracts. So we're getting to the next level of uh, granularity. You can say, no, I, just, I don't want to drop all the traffic. I don't want to permit all the traffic. I want to allow specific layer four protocols and ports. Uh, so to do that, you can create a contract this way. You need to do add intra-EPG contract. When you do so, ACI automatically programs prior villains, automatically programs proxy ARP. You don't need to manually add those. And this programs then the um, policy cam, as you see, you see the source and destination EPG being the same EPG number. And then you see that there are contracts, so the ones you define for um, intra-EPG uh, contracts with a priority even higher than the intra-EPG isolation. So class equal filter priority one. We can configure the contracts not just per permit, you can also configure them for deny, uh, permit plus log, deny plus log. And since the 4.0 release also for redirect to a layer 4 device or copy, if you want to um, send a copy of the traffic to uh, another firewall or uh, IPS. Now let's talk about micro EPG. So micro EPGs allow to group endpoints based on their attributes, as we already described. Uh, let's take a concrete example, which gives you an idea of how it's configured. So first of all, you need to define what is called an, a base EPG. The base EPG is just a regular EPG. You don't specify anywhere it is a base EPG. It's just normal EPG on a bridge domain. And you will have workloads, physical or virtual. There's nothing specific to, to this EPG, okay? Now, the classification, the traffic into this EPG is the usual one. So static binding, dynamic binding, usual way of doing things based on, you know, VLANs or VNIC to poor group association. And all the workloads that you want to further classify into smaller groups, they need to be associated with the base EPG. You can then create a more specific EPG, a micro-segmented EPG, by saying, for instance, the MAC address that you see displayed here belongs to the MyDB micro-segment. So this is, you can see that this is the MAC, and this will be categorized and classified in this EPG. So if then you want to put contracts to define which uh, servers can access this DB, you need to put them on the micro-segmented EPG because the ones on the base EPG will not apply anymore once the host has been moved. The micro-segmented EPG must be on the same BD as the base EPG or the base EPGs. You could also have more than one base EPG. There's no restriction there. And also, just for you to know, the micro-segmented EPG doesn't have a relation to a base EPG, okay? You could have multiple base EPGs. This micro-segmented EPG could be because of workloads in this EPG or in another one. So it's a per BD configuration. Uh, the base EPG just serves the purpose of associating traffic to the BD. And the micro-segmented EPG divides the traffic from that BD uh, from whichever base EPG into a dedicated uh, micro-segmented EPG. Now, for endpoints connected to physical domains, you can classify them based on IP or MAC addresses for the reasons that are quite self-explanatory. Uh, we cannot use VM attributes for physical host. The configuration, again, is very simple. Uh, you would have a base EPG, then you would define a micro-segmented EPG. Here, we called it a bare metal DB. Now, you need to specify the physical domain also under the micro-segmented EPG, which uh, needs to match the one of the base EPG or EPGs. And then here you need to specify static leaf. You need to tell the system on which leaf this must be uh, deployed. This is the detail of the micro-segmented configuration. You see that the physical domain is set. Um, and then this is the detail of the uh, static leaf configuration. Now, this is the real you know, classification configuration. Like here, you say which MAC you want to map. And then you will see here in operational client endpoints, you will see the endpoints showing up under 
the micro segment to the PG. Now for Microsoft for VMware, uh, you can use IP classification, MAC classification, or VM attributes. This is the list of all the different attributes you can use. So you can see the VMM domain has, you know, a wider set of options that you can leverage. Now the configuration will consist as usual of a base EPG. So the base EPG will be a regular EPG with a VMM domain associated to it. And then what you need to do is you need to enable this feature, allow micro segmentation. What this feature does is programming the port groups on VDS or on the virtualized server with prior VLANs, which by the way, this is done dynamically. You don't need to tell the system which prior VLANs to use. And it's also programming the leaf. Here you see it's programming with isolated uh, prior VLANs, but it is also programming the leaf uh, with a proxy ARP, okay? So that ACI, the leaf will answer to ARP requests for uh, VMs in the same layer to domain. Then the uh, deployment immediacy is uh, user configurable, but the resolution immediacy is not. I mean, it is configurable, but whatever you put here is irrelevant. So whether you put on, uh, you know, uh, on demand or immediate, ACI will always program resolution immediacy immediate. The deployment immediacy is instead is configurable. And as you remember, it optimizes the provisioning of the policy cam rules, making that dependent on the first packet being sent by one of the uh, hosts. Now you can see here that the, uh, the client endpoints are uh, discovered in the uh, base EPG, so the, the uh, green EPG. Now the uh, communication between the host is based on proxy ARP because ACI program the leaves with uh, proxy ARP. Now what you want to do, of course, is go into more granular configuration. So you define now the micro segmented EPG. You must define the same domain as the VMN domain used in the base EPG or in one of the base EPGs. And then resolution immediacy, again, you can set it to another value, but it doesn't matter. You see, I will set it to immediate. Deployment immediacy is configurable. You can enter uh, on demand if you prefer. And then um, this is where you define which uh, uh, matching criteria you want to use. And in this case, you can see that the Ubuntu VM has been classified into a micro-segmented DPG called Ubuntu VM. So that's, uh, that's basically a micro-segmented DPG in action. So you see here, VM name Ubuntu 01 and the Mac is, you don't need to know the Mac, okay? Uh, you can classify based on the VM name, but ACI will use the Mac address behind the scenes to classify the uh, traffic to the correct EPG. So um, some key points that you need to remember about the configuration, and we, we went through them already. So the micro segmentation domain must be configured. So not just the base EPG domain, but also micro segmented domain. Um, it needs to match the base EPG domain. Base EPG and micro segmented EPGs must be in the same BD. Okay, so, so they need to be in the same BD for this to work. Uh, and again, the base EPG takes care of mapping traffic to BD, and then you can further classify the traffic in micro segmented EPGs. Uh, micro segmented EPGs are full fledged EPGs, so they can be part of a preferred group. You can also have intra EPG isolation within the micro segmented EPG if you want. You can also have intra-IPG contracts within the micro-segmented EPGs. Now, in the case uh, of physical domains and VMware VM domains, there is no presence between MAC and IP-based EPG. Basically, the traffic uh, that is laid to switch is classified based on MAC, and traffic that's routed is classified based on IP EPGs. Don't forget that in the case of physical domains, you also need to specify in which leaf you want the configuration to be provisioned, when that's command static leaf. And in the case of VMware BDS domain, allow micro segmentation is key uh, to tell ACI that it must provision private VLANs, uh, it must configure the port group on the virtualized host with private VLANs, and it must set also proxy ARP for uh, the leaf to answer the ARP request for the other uh, VMs. And if you have intermediate switches between the virtualized host and the leaf, don't forget that you must tell them that the VLANs are being used are private VLANs in order to avoid the intermediate switches do actually switch traffic between the VMs directly.